Amen. When he preaches to Nineveh, the entire town of Nineveh repents. 120,000 people turn to God. But watch what happens in the life of Jonah. Jonah gets angry that the enemy is getting saved. Jonah gets angry, let me say it to you church, that the enemy, his arch enemy, his arch rival is coming to God. Yeah. How can we be a church, listen to me, let me ask you a question. How can we be a church of believers if we're not extending God's love to the unbeliever? Yeah. If we're not extending God's love to the people who need God the most. If we're not extending God's love, amen, to the people who are hurting, who are going through difficult situations in their life. Come on, look at your neighbor tonight and say, neighbor, neighbor. you got to preach the word. You are preaching the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to <laughs> preach the word, neighbor. Hallelujah. The Bible reminds us in Proverbs 24, verse 17 and 18, do not gloat or do not have joy when your enemy falls. When they stumble, do not let your heart rejoice or the Lord will see and disapprove and turn his wrath away from your enemy. Yeah. Let the church say amen. amen. Say this out loud. The gospel, the gospel is, for is for me and everyone around me. Everyone around me. Come on, church. Somebody say it one more time. The gospel is for me, gospel is for me and for everyone around me. Everyone Come on, around give me. the Lord a clap offering tonight. Hallelujah. As we get into our chapter tonight, Jonah chapter 4, we're going to see, amen, God's grace and mercy over the nation of the Assyrian nation. Yeah. We're going to see God take uh, Jonah to the woodshed. How many of you know that the, that <laughs> God doesn't spank the devil's children, God spanks his own children? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody say amen to, amen to that. How many of you have been in the line at the grocery store, amen, trying to pay for your liquor, whatever it is, with trying to pay for your stuff at the grocery store, and the lady in front of you has got three kids, and those kids are acting a fool up on that line, they're grabbing for the candy. One is screaming, crying, Mommy, I want this candy. Mommy, I want this candy. Amen. And they're acting a fool. They're grabbing the candy. They're tearing the mom apart. Amen. You're standing behind the woman in front of you. And you're saying to yourself, man, it's, if that was my kid, I want to snatch that kid up right now. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Anybody ever had that happen to them in the line? Yes, yes, yes. But how many of you know you don't dare touch that child? That's right. Somebody say amen, amen to that. To that. Yeah, yeah, you don't dare touch somebody else's kid. So God will judge the unrighteous. God, they have judgment waiting for them, but God will judge his own children. And we're going to see that here in Jonah chapter 4. Let's get started. Let's, let me open with a word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you, Lord God, for your love and your grace, your mercy and your goodness. And we pray, Lord God, that you would open our eyes to see, Lord God, that everybody who repents is worthy of your salvation, God. Father, we give you praise, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the power of your word. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody says, amen, amen, amen. amen. I want to share a quote with you that I want you to listen to very carefully. I don't remember who the quote is by, but I've used this quote before. I want to say it to you like this. A man who refuses to forgive destroys the very bridge over which he himself must cross. Let me say it one more time. The man who refuses to forgive destroys the very bridge over which he himself must cross. Let the church say amen. amen. Let me ask you a question, church. Have you been forgiven today? Yes. Come on, everybody say yes. yes. Have you been forgiven today? Yes. Okay, then if you've been forgiven, you need to be a forgiving person. Yes. Okay. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. How many of you are like me? You're good at, real good at holding a grudge. I'm Come on, I can hold a grudge. This is the queen of grudge right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can hold a, come on, I can hold a grudge for a long time, guys. Yeah, yeah. But let me just tell you, I've got to remember all the time that if God has been merciful to me, I've got to be merciful to others. If God has been loving to me, I've got to be loving to others. If God has shown me grace and mercy, I've got to be gracious and merciful to others. Let the church say amen. So we see this story now as we pick up in Jonah chapter 4. We're going to start in chapter 3, verse number 10, and roll right through. Amen? Watch what he says here. When God saw that the nation of Nineveh did turn, and how they turned from their evil ways, God had compassion on them and did not bring on them the destruction that he had threatened. Chapter 4, verse 1. But Jonah was greatly displeased with God and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, O oh Lord, 
This is this not what I said when I was still at home in Israel? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you were gracious and that you were compassionate. Yes. That you were a gracious God, a compassionate God, to God, slow to anger and abounding in love. A God who relents from sending calamity. Let the church say amen. amen. Look what he says in verse number three. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to see stay alive and see my enemies be saved let the church say amen. amen oh my god watch this this is so heavy because jonah is literally complaining he's having a tantrum come on somebody he's having a tantrum yeah. because the enemies his enemies have gotten saved <laughs> yeah. let me just tell you church salvation is for everybody salvation is for everybody in fact the bible says for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only that whoever believed on him would not, but would have. Come on, the world is the world. Hallelujah. You were part of the world. Amen. No matter where you came from, you might have come from Southern California. You might have come from Northern California. You might have come from Vegas. You might have come from Colorado. You might have come from wherever you're from. Amen. You are the world. Let the church say amen. amen. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Yes. That whoever, whoever whoever would believe on him yeah. would not perish yeah. but would have eternal life yeah. you, put your right hand over your heart and say i have eternal life today, have eternal life today. because i believe in god's son say it one more time i have eternal life today because i believe in god's word one more time i have eternal life today because i trust in the lord that's right. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not just on Wednesday night when your stomach's full. Not just on Sunday morning when your stomach's full. Come on. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, put God first and he will direct your steps. Let the church say amen. Come on. Give the Lord a clap offering tonight. Yes, yes, yes. Now let's get into this word. Verse number four. So Jonah was mad at God. Look what he says in verse number three. Now, Lord, he says, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, have you any right to be angry with me? Have you any right to be angry with the Ninevites? Have you any right to be angry at all after what I've done for you? After I have rescued you? After I've been gracious and merciful to you, do you have any right to be angry with somebody else for turning from their wicked way, from giving their life over to God? Oh, Jonah was mad. He was mad. Watch this. Watch what it says here. It says here, the Lord says, do you have any right to be angry? Verse number five, Jonah went out and sat down in a place east of the city. He leaves the town after all the people, after the king calls for a total uh, uh, fast, for total prayer. For total repentance of the whole city, 120,000 people, revival breaks out in the city, everyone's repenting of their sins. Jonah decides, I'm getting out of here. I'm leaving the city. I don't want to be around these people. So he goes up on the hillside east of the city. Watch what it says here. Jonah went out and sat down at a place east of the city. And there he made himself a shelter. And he sat in, sat in the shade and waited to see what would happen to the city. He's waiting to see, hopefully God will destroy my enemies. Let the church say amen to that. Amen. Oh God, church, let, let me just say something to you. This is powerful. When that whole town of Nineveh repented, it made, it surprised the nation of Israel. They couldn't understand. They thought God was only their God. Mm. Not realizing, amen, that God's promise, amen, to, uh, to Abraham in Genesis. Remember, when he made his promise to Abraham, there was no such thing as Jews. There was no such thing as a Jewish person. Abraham, amen, as we uh, learned on Sunday, Abraham was an idol worship, uh, worshiping, uh, uh, idol worshiper from Babylon. Yeah. And God said to him, listen, I want to take you away. I want you to get away from your family. I want you to give your life to me and watch what I will do in your life. Let the church say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor tonight and say, neighbor, neighbor. when you trust God, trust God. Big, things big things happen. 
Yeah, look at the neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor, when you trust God, big things happen. Billy just gave a testimony right now. He was up here and he said, look, man. He was uh, said I was a wild child. Come on, somebody. I was uh, I was bipolar. Amen. I was a drug addict. I was a dope fiend. Come on, I did all that stuff. But when I trusted God, yeah. but when I trusted God, yeah. but when I accepted God, yeah. when I gave my life to God and I trusted Him, Hallelujah. He began to do miracles in my life. Let the church say Amen. amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it out loud. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch what it says. Jonah went out, verse number five, sat down in a place east of the city, and there he made himself a shelter. He sat in its shade and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then God, verse number six, provided a vine to grow out of the ground and made it grow up over Jonah to give him shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah, for one second, was very happy about the vine. How many of you know when God gives his blessings, it's a time to be happy? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse number 14 says this. In the day of prosperity, rejoice. Yeah. When everything is happening in your life that's good, be happy. Yeah. He says, but the, in the day of adversity, consider. Come on, somebody. <laughs> consider that God has made one as well as the other. Let the church say amen. amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Does God allow adversity in our lives to push us closer to God? Yes. He says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Hallelujah. And so sometimes God allows things to happen in our lives. Amen. So that we will call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you know sometimes when the bills are paid, you got money in the bank. Amen. The rent is paid. All that stuff is good. You don't really have a need to call on God. But the minute something happens, come on somebody, the minute challenges come, the minute trials come, the minute things begin to happen, adversity comes your way, you're quick to say, oh my God. Jesus. Oh Jesus, I need your help. Where are you, God? Right. Where are you, God? I need you now, God. I need you now. Where are you, God? Hallelujah. Woo. Somebody say amen to, amen to that. Watch what it says. Watch what it says here. Jonah was very happy about the vine that God caused to grow over him. Verse number seven. But at dawn the next day... God provided a worm which ate the vine, and so the vine withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said it would be better for me to die than to live. Let the church say amen. Did, God, did Jonah have any control over the vine? But he said it was happy when it grew over him. Then God sent the worm to kill the vine. Yeah. And what happened to Jonah? He got, went back to being angry. What is the Hebrew definition of he was angry? It means to be hot. Yeah. <laughs> to get so hot, to get so angry that you become, come on. How many of you have heard the expression, I was hot under the collar? Come on, somebody. Yeah. You heard that expression? Somebody disrespected you and you got hot. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You, okay. got a, you got a short fuse and you wanted to do something about it. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, watch what happens here. Jonah was angry, but God says, I'm going to give him a taste of his own medicine. And he creates the hot wind to blow over Jonah. Amen. Jonah was angry. God says, I'm going to show you what my anger is like. And he blows this hot wind over him. Watch what it says here. God provided a scorching east wind and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, it would be better for me to die than to live. Verse number nine. But God said to Jonah, do you have a right to be angry about the vine? I do, Jonah said. I do. He said, I am angry enough to die. <laughs> but the Lord said, you have been concerned about this vine. Though you did do nothing to tend it or to make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who have no moral compass to tell their right hand from their left hand, and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about those great people, about that great city? Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah, church, hallelujah. God is talking to us tonight about the attitude of the believer. How many of you know, amen, that it's real easy for us to have a bad attitude. Come on, somebody say amen to that. 
a bad attitude when we trust God, but he doesn't show up. A bad attitude when people are getting blessed and we're not getting blessed. Come on, somebody. A bad attitude when we see people doing better than us. A bad attitude. Come on, we have all kinds of reasons to have a bad attitude. But God is saying this tonight. Listen to me, church. God is saying, wait a minute. I have been gracious and I have been merciful and I have been good to you. Why do you, why does it make you upset when I'm good, when I'm gracious and merciful to others? Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, turn with me in your Bible to Philippians chapter two. Let's finish the word right here. Philippians chapter two. Go to your right. If you get to, if you get to uh, Revelation, you've gone too far. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Ephesians. Philippians, Colossians, Philippians chapter 2. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. 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 Watch this. Jonah was happy when God saved him, but he was mad when God saved Nineveh. Jonah was learning a valuable lesson about God's mercy and forgiveness. God's forgiveness was not only for Jonah and Israel alone, it extends to all re who repent and believe. Let the church say amen. amen. If we will obey God, he will lead us. His harsh judgment is for those who persist in rebellion against him. And if we heed God's warnings to us through his word, and if we, sp we respond in obedience, God will be gracious and we will receive his mercy, not his punishment. Let the church say amen. amen. Philippians chapter 2. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get this. Let's get this. Starting in verse number one. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if you have been comforted, if you have any comfort, Chris, from his love, if you have any fellowship with God's spirit, if you have any tenderness and compassion, Paul says, then make my joy complete by having the mind of Christ, by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and in purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or out of vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, come on, say this out loud, church. I have to consider, have to consider others, others better than myself. That means if God has been loving and gracious to you, you got to be loving and gracious to the people around you, especially to the ones that you think don't deserve it. Let the church say amen. amen. Watch what he says here. Verse number four. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped for, but made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. Let the church say amen. amen. He humbled himself and became obedient to God's plan, even to the point of death, even death on the cross for you and me. Therefore, because he humbled himself, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let the church say amen. amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it out loud, church. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Say it out loud, church. Jesus Christ is Lord. Christ is Lord. Say it out loud, church. Jesus Christ, is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. We've got to have the heart of God. We've got to have the word of God. And most importantly, we've got to display the love of God. Somebody say amen to that. I told you this, I told you this church, listen to me carefully. Faith can be practiced by yourself. Mercy can be practiced by yourself. 
but love has to be demonstrated in a group. Mm. Yeah. That's good. How do you demonstrate love? You be loving towards others. Yeah. Let the church say amen. amen. Everybody stand up right where you are. Come on, let's pray. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering tonight. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says this. First Peter, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Come on, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. That means let God use you in your life. Let God use you with his plan. Hallelujah. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. And he will lift you up in due season. Everybody say this out loud. I'm ready to be lifted up. I'm ready for a new season. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Let's pray. Father, we come before you now, Lord God. And thank you, Lord God, for the power of your word. Help us, Lord, not to be angry at you or angry at anyone else because they might be doing a little better than us. But Lord, bless each one here under the sound of my voice, Lord God. Bless each one here tonight. Let them remember, Lord God, your sacrifice you made for them to be nailed to that cross, Lord God. And yet while they were nailing you to the cross, you said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Help us, Lord, Lord, to have the mind of Christ. Help us to have the word of God. And more importantly, help us to display the love of God to others. Lord, we love you and we give you praise tonight. Everyone would repeat with me and say, Dear Lord, Dear Lord please forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart, God. Be my God. Be my Savior. I give my life to you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit with your love and your power and make me a new person today. I receive you as my Lord. I receive you as my Savior. Receive me as your child today. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, Father, I pray over these that are here under the sound of my voice, Lord God, and I release a fresh anointing of grace and of peace and of joy in their life, Lord God. I ask you, Lord God, to fill them to the full, to the overflow, Lord God, with your Holy Spirit and with your power. And let them, Lord God, display the love of God everywhere they go. Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. All God's people say? Amen. All God's people say? Amen. All God's people say? Amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. All right, guys, I just need you for a few minutes more. I want to remind you, if you want to get out of here, there are programs that you can go to. And I want to remind you that downtime is not lost time. This is preparation time, okay? If you want Bibles, we 